For those of us that want to leave a dent on this planet, success is a daily thought and a consistent commitment. The good part is, success leaves clues. There are rules to follow if you want to be successful, and we identify those rules for you. Welcome to the Rules of Success interview series, where we converse with experts, mentors, high-level achievers in all industries, laying out for you the rules of success. Now here's your host, Bryce Prescott. We're back, my friends. Interview series episode coming to your earbuds right to the dome right now. Today, we have Jay Nixon, author of the incredible book called The Overweight Mind. I'll get into the proper introduction of that soon. But today's rule is something that is extremely valuable for you to understand. It's one of the key tenets of achievement. And if you do not understand this part, if you don't allow your mind to grasp hold of this truth that Jay is going to share here soon, you will not succeed. So how about I shut up and get to the right? Here is today's rule. All right, Bryce. I think for me, the the you know the law of belief is one of the most important things that that I think we can should all you know get our minds wrapped around. I think we always act in a manner consistent with our belief system and our, our personal belief system if you want to take a, a deeper dive with that. And I believe that we can, all individuals, I believe in abundance, I believe we can all be, do, and have anything that we set our minds to as long as we're willing to take massive action in the direction of those goals or those busts or those achievements that we want to have in our life. And so I think that all really stems from, like, what do you believe? You know what I mean? So there it is. The law of belief. You don't have to have something in order to do something which will then have you be something. It's actually a reverse. You you embody, you become what you want to become, and that will in turn give you the things that you would have to which you can then do anything you want with those. It's a, it's, we talk a little bit about that equation here in our episode, but I wanted to first give a proper introduction to Jay Nixon. As I said, he is the author of the book, The Overweight Mind, the full title is The Overweight Mind, The Undeniable Truth Behind Why You're Not Losing Weight. And although it does have a weight loss kind of spin to it or increased health and fitness spin to it, it is a workbook and an incredible read for change, period. He talks about the difference between psychology and mechanics and getting your mind right. And then from there, once you have your mind right, the mechanics kind of work themselves out. Anyway, a little bit about Jay's backstory is he's a speaker, he's an author, he's a mentor, coach. He owns Thrive Fitness Studio in Palm Desert, California. And uh, he calls himself the Grateful Leader of the Thrive Tribe, which are a collection of his current and former clients who work together to improve their health, fitness, and their lives. Now, you go back two decades... And from then until now, Jay's helped thousands of people achieve total body transformation. Um, He's just a great guy. He understands change. And everything about what he does is with the mantra, with the commitment to help a million people truly transform their life. And his new book, The Overweight Mind, is a key part of that. And we just have a really powerful conversation. We talk about a lot of different things respect to the law of attraction, to change, the law of belief to how this affects the other parts of our lives. It's not just about weight loss and fitness. It's about having a healthy life and lifestyle. Anyway, we're going to get right to this interview soon. But before that, here's a few words about our sponsors. This show would not be possible without the contribution and assistance of our sponsors. The first one I want to talk about is XR Nutrition. They are a whole health food supplement company that addresses health, at a cellular level. They provide supplements that actually address the way that your body performs. There are two key pieces of what happens with our health respective to what we eat. What we put in our mouth is what we ingest, but what actually happens once it's inside our body is what we digest. Now, we know that most of the food that we consume nowadays is devoid of the basic and vital vitamins and minerals. So the solution is actually XR Nutrition's lineup. They have 26 different products that are available to fill in the gap for health seekers. Their products support a healthy lifestyle. They provide whole food, plant-based nutrients that are ready to consume or absorb immediately. You guys got to check them out. Go to bp.xrnutrition.com. Use Rules of Success 20 at checkout. Get your discount. You will not regret it. Really, really great stuff. It will make you feel better. 
My other sponsor I want to talk about is Gnarly Nutrition. Now, Gnarly is the company and the supplementation I use for what happens before, during, and after my strenuous workouts. Gnarly provides pre-workout powders, branch chain amino acids to drink during your workout, whey proteins for afterwards. They have meal replacements. They are basically there to make sure that when you're stressing your body during that before, during, and after that very key time, you've got everything you need. Now, if you go to gonarly.com, use rules of success at checkout, you'll get 25% off your entire order. While you're there, stick around and poke around their website. They've got tons of great resources about helping you just to become the best version of yourself possible. Again, gonarly.com, use rules of success at checkout, 25% off. And lastly, I want to talk about what else helps this podcast stay off the ground. You know, I first started Rules of Success. I started it just as a platform. And opportunities presented themselves where people approached me about helping them to traverse through the challenges that we were talking about overcoming on the podcast. And what has come of that has been I've created a private coaching platform within Facebook called The Annex. If you go to jointheannex.com, I would encourage you to check out that video there and to join us in The Annex. It's got private coaching. We have an entire platform that we help each other to stay with our minds where they need to be. It's, it goes along of the lines of what you truly need to succeed. You have to have the right access to information, you have to have the right guidance and mentorship, and you have to have a right community. Within the Annex, we have that community. Also, when you're at Join the Annex, if you'd like to work with me one-on-one and address and walk through the 12-week success toolbox program with me as your private coach, that would be where you do that. There's an entire process there on how we can arrange a call where we can talk about if it would be a fit for me to be your one-on-one coach. Here's the thing. Coaching and having somebody there that is a benevolent partner that is out for you is different than having a cheerleader in your corner. It offers you a specific perspective that helps to accelerate, to collapse time, to make it so that you get to your results quicker. And I would love the opportunity to share with you how that could work because the results that you really want are not as far away as you think they are. All you have to have is, again, those three things, information, coaching, and the right community. And I've got all those things available to you at jointheannex.com. What's going on, my friends? Another interview series episode here. And uh, I got to be stoked. I got to tell you how stoked I am to have Jay Nixon author of The Overweight Mind, here with me today. What's going on, Jay? How you doing, buddy? Dude, I am having a fantastic day, Bryce, and I just want to say thank you for um, for the opportunity, man. I love talking to like-minded individuals, and um, I'm ready to have some fun. You know, dude, this this whole process of getting on the show has been kind of cool. We were introduced by a mutual friend, uh, Mr. Tommy Baker. He's, uh, he's played a big part, and uh, he's actually one of the few three-timers I've had on Rules of Success, and he recommended that... Uh, my message and your message would jive. And so shout out to Tommy for hooking us up. And I'm really excited too. I wanted to let you know this. Uh, when we were arranging everything, I told you I was going to read your book in its entirety. I was able to do that. I was able this last weekend to pick it up. The Overweight Mind uh, passed through my fingers every word on every page over the course of about two days. 145 some odd pages there. And uh, I got to tell you, buddy, you've created a really powerful resource for the market with action steps. You back it up with the psychology. Like, it's just a really, really good thing. So before we get going and talking about kind of your backstory, the creation process, all that, I wanted to give you props for creating an incredible book, man. Really, really good job. Thank you. Thank you, man. I mean, you know, it's just, it was a labor of love and it was something that I just, I felt like I had to, I felt like I had to write it and and had to get it in people's hands. You know, it was, it was actually fun. It was super fun to do. And the feedback that I'm getting from, just like you said, people that are taking the action steps are, is amazing. I mean, people are getting, I'm getting a, such a great response from it. Well, before we get into your backstory, I'd like you to give the listeners of this show somewhat of an elevator pitch. They've never heard of you or let's, not that they haven't, if they've never heard of you, Jay Nixon, and they've never heard of your book, what exactly is your book, The Overweight Mind, The Undeniable Truth Behind Why You're Not Losing Weight? Absolutely. So if, if I met you in an elevator, Bryce, and you're like, hey, man, what do you do? So I always say, you know, my quick elevator pitch is that I use fitness and nutrition as a medium to help people become their best self. And so fitness and nutrition as a, you know, as a, a fitness studio owner and as a coach and a mentor is just kind of how I get people into my world 
And then my sole goal is to help them become the best version of themselves because I believe that once, you, once you're vibrating or living at your highest level, most of your problems, most of your issues, most of your, the things that we, you know, I'm using air quotes there, that get in our way tend to work themselves out. Most of the things that were struggles for us are generally byproducts of us not operating, acting, speaking, being our best self. And so really what The Overweight Mind is, and the reason why I wrote it was because I saw everything in the industry was, in my mind, written or constructed in reverse. Everything is really mechanical. So if you think about this from this terms, I kind of teach from an 80% psychology, 80% mindset, 20% mechanical or program. Everything else is kind of flipped. So like Weight Watchers, virtually 100% mechanical. Jenny Craig, 100% mechanical. Even if you go down to like bariatric surgery, mechanical, 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 what happens is the person, the psychology, the mindset is never touched. And so when the mechanical piece breaks down, when the obstacles get in the way, and we'll just call the obstacles life, the person always reverts back to what they know. And if what they know stayed the same as when they started, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that's why we gain the weight back. That's why we always go back to where we were. And I, and I just felt like there has to be a stop to that, man. And so that's my, this, the overweight mind is the first step in, in throwing the, the gauntlet down and saying, hey, there's a better way. What a, I, I really appreciate that description of your book because that's, having read it, that's exactly what I got out of it. You, you're 100% right in my estimation about the difference between psychology versus mechanics and how, ironically, you know, when you, when you look at things, you know, specifically in coaching, mentoring, gyms, you know, all this, all this stuff, you look at it from a marketing standpoint, how do, I, how do I make this seem appealing to a potential client, a potential person that could transform by using this or reading this or applying this? It's so much easier to sell mechanics over psychology. But it's the most ineffective way to get the result. So you had the balls to be like, nope, that's not how we're going to do it this time. We're going mindset between your ears. I wanted to add as well before I ask some questions about kind of how you got into, you know, your the position you are with Thrive and and uh, and you know as a coach and mentor. You know, being that you're an author and doing what you do, you are a full blown entrepreneur. Would you agree? A hundred percent. Okay, so being an entrepreneur, there is this kind of underbelly that comes in that world that a lot of times we don't want to acknowledge. And that underbelly includes bad health. It includes um, drug use, sedation, abuse of our bodies, lack of sleep. A lot of times it includes bad relationships. Um, it's very easy under the, the weight of the entrepreneur journey to turn to things, even food, of course, that are not good for you as a, as a way to release, as a way to get out of it, of, of the pain, of the, of the pressure. And it's even been shown, statistically speaking, that you know depression is a very common thing that happens amongst entrepreneurs. That the the chemical balance of how their physiology makes up causes all sorts of havoc when it comes to the perspective to which they see the world. And so the question that I pose to you is, I'm I'm, I'm lobbing up a softball here for you in case you're wondering. <laughs> okay, good. Is how do how does your physical health address those things? I mean, I think it's paramount. I mean, I, I believe that, you know, first and foremost, I'll even kind of to take it even a, a step further. I believe that, you know, how you treat yourself teaches everyone else, teaches the world how to treat you. And then in the position that I'm in, I believe that, you know, my body is my, is my business card. You, my body is, the, is, you know, my physical and mental aspects are, are paramount in how I am able to position myself in order to help someone else. And so I look at it as an obligation, if you will, that I don't have the, you know, I don't have a choice anymore other than to be at the tip top of my game. And so that's what I try to teach to my clients. Like, let's just say you want to be the best dad or the best mom or the best whatever in the world. The first thing that your kids are watching, their kid, your kids, your children are watching everything you do. And if you treat your body like a garbage can versus, you know, the, the gift that it is, 
then really your you know your your kids are going to take that information and they're going to plug it into their you know into their atmosphere and and start to behave in the same exact way so i just feel like your body's kind of the first piece and then you can get into the whole mental and spiritual and the whole other aspects and it all plays a, an important role. I've used this example several times. The listeners of the show might actually have tired of me using it, but I think it actually <laughs> really, really, really applies to what you're, you've, you've t- you're talking about here. And then of course, in your book, you know, mindset is such a powerful thing. When, when you have a success-based mindset, it can overcome a lot of different limitations. And and I've used this as an example of you. So if you if you were committed and you had the mindset that you were going to run a marathon, marathon's a big deal. It's a long time running, physical pain, you know, endurance, the whole thing. If you make the decision that you're going to do that, it's going to happen. If you have a broken ankle, technically you could still run that marathon. But your physical body is going to be injecting all sorts of noise into that brain of yours saying, dude, this hurts. Damage is happening. I can't do it. But technically speaking, if your mindset was strong enough, you could overcome that. Now, your body, though, if it's healthy and it's working right, it can actually make an a weaker mindset more successful because it's not going to get into the way of the choice of having to stick with the success-based mindset. Does that make sense? Is that absolutely, absolutely? You just take it. Yeah, if you keep, if you have a healthy body, if the, you know, the body's in physical top, you know, not really. I'm going to say tip top condition, but in high working order, then yeah, you're just taking out one of the one of the obstacles that most people face on a daily basis. I love I love that nowadays this is becoming you know with with mediums like podcasting and there's so much more attention towards health and balance with you know podcasts like mine and others that are in the space with you know f- social media and everything this this message of balance is louder than it's ever been you know you wrote a book basically about that you know get your body on point through your mind you know yeah. starts with your head and then gets and then the beautiful thing is that and I'm sure you've considered this you <laughs> You've set yourself up to write a bunch of different books by oh, yeah. addressing your overweight relationship, your overweight spirituality, your over, you know all the different things that come that we don't you know we do backwards. We're looking for mechanics instead of change of mindset. You know what's funny, Bryce? Can I can I say something really quick? It just of course, it yeah. Popped, popped into my head whenever you just said that about like the overweight relationships and the overweight everything. So as a you know as a coach and um you know I, I have a lot of people in, in my programs and whatnot. And like I said earlier, the the entree into the program is is nutrition and fitness. But once people get inside, we start to uncover all of these other things. And there are, you know, it's I'd say over sixty percent of the questions that I get have zero to do with actual fitness and nutrition. They're all based on relationships. They're all based on other things. You know what I mean? Their stories. Their with their childhoods, their everything. And so you're so right. There's so much to uncover with this whole overweight mental concept. Well, just make sure you pay me a royalty for the idea. You're in. Um, you're in. I, wrote, I wrote it down right here. <laughs> Bryce is in. Well, it's on recorded too. So, um, well, this is, this is fascinating because you're, you're absolutely right. I've actually noticed that as well, you know, is, is, uh, the host of rules of success now for your episode is episode 180. So it's kind of a benchmark episode. Um, uh, the, the entire, the entire time that I've been doing this podcast, there's been this, this narrative of balance, you know, and a rising tide literally raises all boats. The better in shape you are, if it's healthy and, you know, manageable and it's you know, not some, you're not spending six hours a day at the gym and, you know, all that stuff, but it's a, a manageable, healthy lifestyle. It makes everything else better. And it really does translate across all the other areas of your life. You know, I, I had a mentor at one time ask me, I was really stressing out about money. And he says, uh, you want to you make some money, dude? I go, absolutely. Like money's my challenge right now. Yeah. And he goes, well, go play with your kids. And I go, what? <laughs> play yeah. with my kid? No, that's not going to make me money. He's like, no, it will. Like there's a bandwidth. There's, there's, a, there's a, a tax that you carry from the guilt of not addressing the relationship you have with your family in a way that actually holds you back from making money. And they don't need 100% of your time. They just need you present when you're there. So go take some time, leave your phone in the car, go play with your kids. And it was really, really powerful thing. And it sounds like within your system and, and the name of your studio is Thrive Fitness, right? 
Yeah, Thrive Fitness Studio. Okay, correct. Thrive Fitness. It's, it's in uh, Palm Desert, California? Correct. Yeah, a little okay. suburb of Palm Springs. Perfect. Okay, so if you're in the area, you guys, go check them out. But uh, anyway, the whole point of, of bringing that up is that uh, one of the things that is has always been a powerful anecdote for me, you know, bringing up money again, was that if, if you were to look at your relationship with money the way that you look at your relationship with, let's say, your significant other, how what, what would money do? You know, it's like if you... If, or excuse me, if it was flipped. If you treated your significant other the way that you treated money, you know, if you ignored it or treated it badly when it wasn't around, you act like it was never there for you. You complained you never had enough attention from it. If you, you know, were unwilling to put the time in to care for it properly and to to allow it to grow what would your significant other do? And it's like, of course, will they bail out on you? Well, well money yeah. does the same thing. Like, and again, this is, this is going back into the tenet of your book. Like it's a mindset thing that translates across all the areas. And you just happen to go through the door of health and fitness first. Absolutely. I agree. It's all, it's all energy, right? And so really yes. money, money as a whole is really just energy. And if we treat it with the right respect and the right energy, it will come to you abundantly, right? And the same thing with relationships and the same thing. You can even flip the script on that and say, you know, if treat your, you know, and this, this sounds a little crude, but I think hopefully people will understand what I mean by this. If you treated your relationship like a business, you know what I mean? Like, you know, if you're an entrepreneur like myself, then the likelihood of your having a successful relationship is really high because as entrepreneurs, we're designed to love our business, right? We take care of it. We nurture it. We try to make it grow. We do everything we can for it. But then on the flip side, I see so many people do that with their biz and then come home and then treat their relationship like crap, right. you know? So if you really look at it from that perspective, like it's all energy, right? So we treat everything with that same energetic level of um, appreciation. Everything's going to flourish. Yeah. I, I think, though, that in the order of that, you've got it right, that addressing your body first is is key. Like all yeah. of those other things have, it, and it's going to sound counterintuitive, they have equal importance and equal priority, but addressing your physical fitness and your health first yields the quickest and best results. Absolutely. And, and your physiology, the way you use and, and can use your body dictates so many other things, right? Yeah. I mean, it dictates your it dictates your 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 happiness for some people, your everything, you know, it's, it's all, it's all relevant. Well, let's, let's back up a little bit because obviously Jay, you, you didn't get to, to this place that you inhabit right now overnight. It was, I'm sure years of, of challenge and struggle and overcoming and, and tension yeah. and all those great things that go into the recipe of success. So I, I asked this of most of my entrepreneur guests on here. Um, and I wanted to kind of find out where you fall in this, in this realm. Okay. Uh, and, and the question revolves around nature versus nurture. We're, we either come to this world a certain way or through our environments, we learn certain traits in that through either a black and white version or kind of a combination of nature versus nurture, we arrive at this somewhat of an entrepreneurial spirit. And I want to know from you, where are you in that? Were you raised this way? Were you in, an, in? Did you just come regardless of environment, being a hustler and entrepreneur, or was it set by example by those close to you? No, I, you know what I think, Bryce, and this is I've done a lot of um, I've done a lot of meditation on this. I've done a lot of you know journaling and soul searching, and I really believe that it's I'm I'm a byproduct of of my environment and what happened to me. My father was killed um, when I was five years old. Oh, and I brutal, think man. that was the, that was a pivotal moment. And you know, when you tell somebody that their first reaction is like, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And, and again, obviously, sure. I think it's great to be sorry for the actual event and whatever, but it sounds crazy to say if I hadn't, if that hadn't happened to me at such a young age, I don't know that you and I would be having this. Well, I know we wouldn't, we wouldn't be having the same conversation today. And I don't know that I would be, um, you know, and I'll use the word successful in, in, in a very loose term. I think success is defined by a lot of other parameters, but I don't believe I would be as successful as I am today with my entrepreneurial and with just my life in general if I hadn't have had to walk that road. Because um, it made me, it, it made me figure out at an early age how I was going to navigate life. You know what I mean? I like that. I, I agree with you there. Is I mean, you, you've just shared one of the most, you know, most articulate anecdotes 
toward being okay with our station in life is that there's there's a thousand things we could find to be grateful for that were the byproduct of the challenge that we went through. Yeah, I, de- I decided a long time ago that I wasn't going to let my story, you know, and when I use the word story, I mean, we've all got a story, right? Sure. Like nobody's, nobody's road has been, you know, paved with gold and, and you know, perfect and everything. And, we, and I think a lot of us live inside of that um, non-productive story and we fail to to realize that we have the ability to rewrite that thing anytime we choose to. And I think that's been my, the pivotal thing for me was I started probably 15 years ago. Um, I made the decision that I didn't have to, that didn't have to be the way things were, right? Like I got to make the decision on my new story and how I was going to write this bad boy. And from that moment on, just from that simple decision, I shouldn't say simple, but from that decision, it, you know, everything changed for me. I love that you brought that up, this concept of a story. Um, for me, when I hear that, it, it brings up, you know, a, a, an additional kind of expansion into that idea of, you know, beliefs. And, you know, you talked about it earlier and your, your rule of success was about the law of belief and understanding what, you know, is really available to us by just simply choosing to believe. Share with me what an, an example of, of a time when you had a limiting belief and you were able to break through it and, and how that breakthrough impacted your life and, and your journey. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, just now my mind's kind of rolling back to like those, those young childhood, those memories. And I remember thinking at a very, very young age, I'm like, well, okay. You know, when you're, you're growing up as a young, as a young man, like you know, theoretically, you're supposed to learn these things from your father, right? You're supposed to learn how to to play catch and you're supposed to learn how to do, you know, dude stuff. And I real and I made the decision early on, like I, I saw my friends, you know, have, you know, with their dads and, and this and that and doing all these things. And I made the decision early on that this would, ne- I would never be, I would never be held back by not having those things. And I became, and this sounds really bizarre to say, as a, as a really young kid, you know, probably between the ages of like, you know, five and 10, I decided that I was going to be obsessively good at everything I did because I never wanted somebody to be able to look at me and say, well, it's okay. You know what I mean? Like, this is what ha- happened to him when he was really little. And so based on that just early mindset of like, you know, not wanting to be viewed with that or, you know, that story, you know, I just made that quick decision early on that I just wasn't going to happen. And I became super obsessed with just trying to be great at everything I did. And I, and I probably put a lot of pressure on myself as a real, as a young kid, you know? Interesting. So you, you were, you were actively, so your limiting belief in that was that people would view you differently if you weren't this yeah. high level achiever on every level. Absolutely. I'd be, it'd be, it'd be okay, but it'd still be judgment, right? It would be like, well, it'd be that, that, oh, woe is me. And I just, I never wanted that. Like I never wanted it to be that, I never wanted that narrative to be associated with me. So when you, when you look at your position as a mentor and a coach, what are some common limiting beliefs you see in the people that you teach? Um, the first one that comes to mind is just self doubt. Um, I believe that we, as as a society and as as human beings, we don't believe in ourselves nearly enough. Like most of the people that come into my come into my world have some level of of self doubt uh, that they don't believe they're good enough. They've allowed someone else to write their story for them. Could have been an ex husband. Could have been a parent that wasn't, um, you know, that wasn't operating at the highest parental levels could have been a teacher, could have been a coach. Somebody said something to them at some point and they have taken that narrative and they've allowed it to control them into their 30s, 40s, 50s, even 60 60 years of life. And so for me, one of the key things that I try to do is get them to realize that, that this does not have to be the way it is. Like we can start rewriting this story today. And your life can be amazing and beautiful, and it doesn't have to have this this negative connotation. You know, you you brought up something that uh, has been a, a fascinating kind of journey of exploration for me. Um, 
I'm a big fan of Joe Rogan's podcast. And uh, recently he had on there this guy named Jordan Peterson. He's a professor at the University of Toronto. And Jordan was on there. He's gotten himself in some some trouble with the university and stuff because of his stance on kind of the whole jan- transgender movement and the use of different pronouns and everything. But after about the first hour of the the, the episode with Joe, he starts coming in, you know, talking about these really powerful kind of evolutionary and psychological triggers when it comes to development and improvement and expansion and how that applies to our society. And he quotes Carl Jung, the philosopher Carl Jung in there, talking about values. And he says, you know, that Carl Jung believes, and there's plenty of evidence to support this, that you can't create your own values. That if you look at where your values have come from, they've been superimposed upon you through influential figures throughout your entire life. And that would include coaches. So you have your parents, your teachers, your clergymen, your you know religious leaders, your friends, like that. That there's that when when a person arrives at a value that this means something to me and it's a guiding principle for my life, that the recipe of where that value came from actually never comes from truly within a single person. It comes from the influences around inside of that. As I listen to what you talked about with the experiences of you know your clients having self doubt, that change that you discussed or that I heard you share would actually back up what Carl Jung is saying that they are not able to adapt a new value without your outside influence. And then once enough evidence and support is there, they're able to internalize it and it can become a value through a shift in mindset. I find that to be such a fascinating way to look at how as you know, I'm a coach as well, how we get people to change. It's, it's through encouragement, support and evidence. Like they, they can't actually change on their own. I wonder if you had a thought about that, or if you'd ever considered that sort of angle in. Absolutely. You know, sometimes I tell my clients, like you, at first, you may have to believe in my belief in you yes. until you develop your own, right? And that's going to have to be strong, right? And that's why I'm really, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of that. Like I try to tell my, get my clients to understand right away that like, I see something in there that you may not see, and I need you to trust me that it's in there. And eventually, we're going to uncover that, and you're going to see it yourself, and it's going to be in a, a you know in a pivotal aha moment, and that's going to be the game changer. Awesome, man. So, in, in throughout this whole process, who are some of the people that you've leaned on for your assistance, mentors, and authors, and people that have really influenced you? Yeah, you know what? I've really I've absolutely just lucky and blessed. Like I call it, you know, your circle of success, if you will. Yeah. Um, those, those are the people that I surround myself with. And, and a lot of times those could be, you know, mentors that you never even get to speak to just people that, you know, you've taught, you know, you listen to and you follow their teachings and whatnot. So I'd say, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big old school guy. Like I, you know, I've studied Tony Robbins in depth, um, Jim Rohn, Bob Proctor, you know, back to the old days. And then I'm lucky enough that um, my significant other is, um, you know, just is a, an amazing person. She's a, a coach as well, has a really, you know, high evolving energy mindset. And so I'm lucky in those aspects. And then I also believe something, Bryce, I believe that if you're a coach, right, if you're somebody who coaches and mentors and, and teaches and helps other people, I have, a, I have a saying, and Tommy and I kind of always laugh about this, is I say never trust a coach who doesn't have a coach. Right. Because – if we're not growing and evolving, even as, as a coach, like, you know, I'm leading a group of people, if you will. And I use that term leading, you know, very loosely, but I mean, I've got to be expanding my own knowledge, right? I've got to be expanding my own vibration and my own energy. And if I'm not doing that, then I'm not being congruent with my message. And so I'm constantly learning and reading and, you know, I love, you know, I listen to a lot of Gary V stuff today. I like Eric Thomas's stuff. I love, even Joe Rogan, you know, for example, I think he has some amazing podcasts that are kind of like, you know, some, you, sometimes you get this epiphany after you listen to one of Joe's podcasts from some of the, the people that he has on there that have just these such vastly creative and expansive minds that you can kind of like say, oh my gosh, you know, I, I never thought about that in that way. And that just expands your level of knowledge, right? And I'm, I'm just a big believer and we got to keep growing at all costs. Seeing that this is the middle of the show, my hope is that you're finding some great value and insight from the conversation I'm having with my guest. 
We continue that here in a few in the second segment, but I felt a specific desire to share with you a powerful tool that may just be what you're looking for. Throughout my career, I've noticed that success leaves clues. And one of those clues is that all high-level achievers have a coach. Whether it be personal or business coaching, there is a huge value that comes from the direct personal connection and association of someone that can see your blind spots and help you expand past the limits of what you could do on your own. In case you didn't know, I offer both lifestyle coaching and business consulting to my clients. My introductory offering is a 12-week lifestyle expansion program where you and I work one-on-one to redesign your habits and priorities, making space for the life that you really want. It's comprehensive to the four tenets of rules of success, meaning we address your body, your relationships, your business, and your being. If you're ready to increase the results you experience in your life, head over to successtoolsthatwork.com. You'll be able to access all of the content and all of the resources I have available to you, including the opportunity to work directly with me and this free expansion blueprint. It all starts at successtoolsthatwork.com. Back to the show. All right, my friends, second segment. This is great stuff, man. Like, I really appreciate your candor on this. I mean, to, to think that you... Well, I guess just to know that you've been able to arrive at, you know, looking at, you know, losing your father at such a young age as something that has been a catalyst for your success. That takes a high level of maturity and some, you know, really powerful um, perspective that is, you know, all inclusive of this this place we, we live on, this planet Earth, and not, you know, get into the pity party that can happen when you lose something so close to you. So, you know, congrats on, on, on that level of maturity you have. I want to talk more about the same kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's been, you've done fantastic at interweaving your personal beliefs and your mantras in with what goes on in your book, The Overweight Mind. And I, I'd like to continue um, talking about that, but I want to, I want to expand it out. Tell me a little bit more about Thrive Fitness. What exactly do you have going on there? Yeah, you know what? It's about a it's a personal training studio, nutrition facility here in Palm Desert. It's about a le- little less than a thousand square feet, and I'm so picture like I'm trying to get I'd like to get a good, good visual. So just about eight hundred square feet of like active space, and on any given morning at five a.m. Bryce, I will have forty people in that space. <laughs> do the math. Do the math. Do the math on is that. Is it a really mosh quick. pit? Like <laughs> it, it can turn into a mosh pit, but I'm telling you, man, it is the most beautiful um, synergistic flow of of human beings, like all moving in toward the same goal in the same direction. So I don't. Yeah, I'm so lucky and I'm so blessed, man. Hopefully, you can tell by the, the voice and the passion that I'm that I'm that I'm putting off now. Is like it's just the it's the greatest thing ever like i have the the most fantastic clients and i i believe in the the adage that seth godin um, always says like you don't create your tribe like you just show up and you lead them you're like your tribe's already out there and so lucky for me i've been able to just i found my tribe of people and they continue to just flow to me and it's it's a beautiful thing man we we do these crazy high intensity workouts and believe it or not i'd say 90 Probably 90% of my clientele is female, and they're unbelievable. I've got ladies in there that have lost over 120 pounds. Some wow. of them have lost 50 pounds, 60 pounds, 70 pounds. I mean, we're talking like in the with the collective, we're talking thousands of pounds lost just over the course of the last year or two. That's and that's that's cool. But watching who they've become as as women, as leaders, as mothers, as you know everything. It's just been so amazing. And every time that I get a guy that comes in that kind of flows through the studio, like they're always blown away. They're like, these women are all unbelievable. Like they're swinging 80 pound kettlebells. They're doing a hundred burpees for warm ups. And some of these guys have never worked out a day in their life, Bryce. I mean, came straight off the couch. And now if I say, hey guys, we're doing a hundred burpees and then we're going to work out. They just say, okay, cool. Um, can you turn the music up a little bit? <laughs> and they do it, bro. It's it's the craziest thing you've ever seen. It's the most beautiful. Sometimes I just stand in a corner and watch, and it's the most beautiful. It's like almost like watching a, a symphony that goes on. It's it's unbelievable, man. I'm so lucky and so blessed. There is something cool about that studio environment, you know. Yeah. My wife is a Pilates instructor, and so it's obviously a different type of uh, fitness discipline, but. There is a camaraderie that happens with the people that show up on a regular basis and it just kind of spirals upward. So get on you, man. That's really cool. Thank you, bud. 
So let's let's talk more as well about um, kind of the the creative process for uh, the overweight mind. Yeah. Of the authors that I've interviewed on this show, and I've I've uh, interviewed some some really really high level. You know, I interviewed Mark Manson, um, and then yeah. some some other guys that uh, are gaining notoriety by the day. And I would I would count you as one of those guys. What was the the inception moment where you knew you had to write this book? I kept hearing the same thing over and over and over again. Everybody that I talked to it would always say this statement in some, with some variation. They would always say, Jay, I've tried, and you plug in any diet you want, any program you want, any fad thing you want. And, the, and there was usually a laundry list of them, right? Most people don't just try one thing. They've tried everything. And then their final statement was, but I always gain the weight back. And so I kept hearing this over and over and over again. And I'm like, that where's the missing link? Like in the miss, and I, you know, I, in conceptually in my mind, I'm like, the missing link is that three pound monster that sits between their ears. And I just started thinking, like, I have to figure out a way to teach people that it's not the program, right? It's it's the it's the psychology, it's the mindset that's really holding them back from achieving everything that they want to achieve. I, I actually on uh, on Sunday when I was just finishing up your book I made a post on Instagram with a, a clip from one of the pages at your end of your chapters talking about coaching and uh, in my in my description of the post I talked about one of the things that I liked so much about your book and I, I wanted you to um, expand on this yeah. one of the most disingenuous things that happens in self development and coaching and training and you know whatever it, that space is the noise about the need to change mindset without providing a way to do it. Right. Uh, if you tell a person that the problem is their mindset and you leave it at that, it's, it's almost a shame-based declaration that no wonder you're not succeeding. I'm not going to tell you how to succeed, but just stew on the fact you're not succeeding now that you know how or know why, but you don't know how. Yeah, you've just created another problem for the person is what you've done. Yeah. <laughs> a, and a very, a very detrimental one, too, because oftentimes yeah. it's a lot harder to overcome a shame-based mindset than it is, yeah. you know, a, a failure-based one. And so I wanted to ask you, I, I know the answer to this because I've read your book, but how do you address change of a mindset in your book, The Overweight Mind? Absolutely. I believe that in order to make a shift, so let's just say that we have a bad habit or we have a bad ritual or we just need to make a global shift, right? The only way to do that is to replace these the negative things or the non-productive things that we do with actionable steps that move you in the, in the direction of where you want to go, right? And so that's why at the end of every chapter, I, incru- I include a power action and a super action. Some of them are multiple steps. Some of them are, you know, singular activities that you can do. And so I wrote the book, Bryce, not to be really read once and then put on the shelf and never thought of again. It was really designed so that somebody could come back to at least the end of each chapter um, on occasion. For some people, maybe it's every month. For some people, it's maybe it's every quarter. For some people, maybe it's whenever they feel the need, but then they can come back and redo those action steps and watch how things will start to evolve, you know, watch how, you know, I even have a whole chapter in there on circle of success and it's probably the easiest one. I get people to write down, like, who do you perceive is in your circle of success? Does that person move you in a positive direction towards your goals or do they move you further away from your goals, plus or minus? And so based on those answers, If someone moves you further away from where you truly want to be in life, well, then there's an action that needs to happen, right? And so if you revisit that in 60 days and that person is still on your list and still moving you in the the opposite direction, then you're not taking the appropriate action, right? And so that's why I write in the book, I give you the, the steps necessary in order to, you know, evolve through that process and you know i I hate to use the word remove but to transition that person out of your circle of success and transition a new person in so that you can get to where you need to go but let's let's do a a real-time example of that you okay with that 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what I'm hearing from you is that if you have, if you're, well, first of all, in, in order to change your mindset, you have to be aware that your mindset isn't serving you. So if, if you're not right. even aware, you know, <laughs> you don't need to listen to this part. Actually, right. still listen to this part, but but it won't be as impactful. So um, I'll, I'll use a personal example here. Uh, I, I noticed recently that uh, I was getting somewhat um, addicted to social media. I was in, in my mindset, I was looking at social media as a release, as a distraction, and it was the most slippery slope because being a podcast host and a coach and a content creator, it was also a necessary part of my day to day. So based off what you're saying, what would be the way that I would replace that sort of addictive mindset towards social media with something that would be more healthy and but yet still allow me to use it? Absolutely. So for you, it'd be really easy, right, to say, but hey, man, this is my business. I got to do this. So that's, you know, it's a really difficult challenge for you. So what I would say to someone in this in this particular situation is, okay, we've got this slippery slope. And so you know what you need to do for your business, right? Like, you know what you need to do for, you know, Bryce's podcast and his coaching and everything. It's the other stuff, the other addictive you know, nature that you were getting into on the social media that wasn't serving you. And so what I would do is I would have you, you know, schedule, you know, when am I going to do my posting for my business, my podcast, my coaching, whatever it is, we'd set up a structure on that. And then during those times of desire, where you're thinking, sitting there, you know, just thinking, oh my gosh, like I should go check, I should go check, I should go check. I wonder if anybody liked this post or shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. We would change your physiology. So the first thing I would have you do is when that trigger came up, the first thing we would do is we would remove that stimuli by changing your body, right? So if you are somebody who works at home, I would say something as simple as get up from your desk, get up from where you are, take a hot lap around the neighborhood, go walk your dog, go play with your dog for you, go talk to your kids, play with your kids for a second. Just anything that changed your physiology around that particular stimuli would be strong enough to take you out of that, almost that trance that we get into when we get in that social media addiction phase. If you're somebody who doesn't, you know, know, if you're somebody who could, then I would say, you know, if it's a really strong addiction, I would say, you know, you have to basically remove the stimuli. So leave your phone, leave your computer, leave everything, go to the gym, work out, go to your garage, work out, do something of that nature and just create, you know, positive habits around feeling that stimuli and then only do it when you're, you know, designed and scheduled to do it. See the, the great, great advice, man. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, one of the ways that I've, I, I, I wanted to hear your take on this and it actually lines up with what I've kind of already done <laughs> in a way, like, uh, We've decided I don't sleep with devices in my room anymore. I put my Good. phone and my iPad in my office and I just, you know, have a regular alarm. And I, if I need to do something at night, I read. I just, you know, actually have like a time where that's not an answer. Um, and during the day, it's it's become more of a physical thing. I, I love what you're saying. So to extract out, you know, somebody listening to this might not have an issue with social media, but they have something with food or with drinking or, you know, sex or pornography or, you know, any other addictive sources. What I'm hearing you say is that the way that you do that is you, is through action, through feelingness in your body that shifts you out of your head. Is that fair? hundred percent. That's the only way that you're really truly ever going to change that behavior is to replace it with something like you just got th- you speaking about. If not, you know what I mean? Like you, you can sit there and try to talk yourself out of it all day. Like, okay, Bryce, don't go on social media. Don't go on social media. And you may have some, you may have some minimal success with that, but I guarantee if you don't make those shifts, let's just say for you, for example, if you had your iPad or your phone right beside your bed, even though you decided to read that stimuli is still so close for it to be so easy. And eventually you would reach over and grab your phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just would. And it's not, it's not because you necessarily want to, you know, break that, you know, that habit, but it's right there, right? It's, it's too present. Well, one of the kind of afterthoughts of this entire part of our conversation is, is how 
we we may be involved in activities that have an aggregate effect way down the road that we don't even know. Like, you know, for example, me talking about social media, it, it used to be a big part of my habit that at night, you know, I'd go you know, set my alarm on my phone and then, oh, I would scroll through the different social apps, you know, yeah. what's going on with Instagram, who's looking at what, you know, Facebook, Snapchat, you know, <laughs> YouTube even just, and then, oh, I'd be there for 25 minutes like, oh, I need to go to bed. Okay. And then I put it on the side of the thing. Well, I just stared at a bright screen for 25 minutes. And then when I would get up in the morning and I was wondering why I didn't sleep very well. You know, and so um, the same thing happens with food. You know, here's another thing. I was noticing that I was feeling some sort of, uh, you know, lack of discipline when it comes to my eating. And I thought to myself, uh, you know, the easiest way to do this is just to have it be black and white. So I started reading up about intermittent fasting. Right. So I started doing just, you know, an eight hour feeding window from the moment that I get up the second that something hits my stomach that isn't water. Ding, that's when the clock starts. And I don't have to think about other than just eating right. Because my habit, my diet was always clean during the day. It just would be at night where I would, you know, sabotage things. And so I started doing that. And I started noticing in my body that like I was feeling less inflamed in my gut and my stomach. I was actually sleeping way better. I was feeling like a hormonal change in my body to where I was feeling more balanced. And it was all because of just kind of resetting this. And it's like... How many times do we, it, even though you're right that it 100% is 80% mindset, 20% mechanics, that there is mechanics that absolutely have to be addressed even with your mindset and that there, we may not be aware of how easy the life that we really are seeking could be just by being willing to rethink everything. 100%. I mean, just by making that one shift for you, like well, let's just say with the intermittent fasting, be, by your sleep improving, think how many other things in your life exponentially improved, right? Yeah. Relationships, your work, your energy levels, your workouts, like everything based on one thing. You know what I mean? So it's all interwoven and interconnected. Yeah, I think we said that before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It keeps coming back. It's a common theme, right? Yeah, that we. that's the beautiful thing is that there's all these different doorways we can go into to reach the life of balance. Um, and it's the easiest one. The most efficient one is to address your body, which includes your health and fitness and your diet. And then from there, it's just a matter of, you know, kind of playing with a little bit and see what works, what doesn't. I never would have thought, you know, it's funny. I, I justified for so long on the social media standpoint. I mean, I even have, I have a group called the annex, which is a paid group and it's, it's freaking awesome. There's private or uh, group coaching in there. It's a really supportive accountability group, everything. And I would try to spend more time in there to keep the group engaged because I was getting paid for it. You know, these people were there, they're paying a membership fee. And I realized I'm like, yeah, I still can do that. Just not, you know, I don't have to be like a drug addict thinking every time I log into Facebook, I'm, it's like pulling a lever on a slot machine. Like, what am I going to get this time? Right. Oh, I didn't get what I wanted. Oh, well, here's yeah. another one. Let's roll again, you know. Well, and then when you do get what you wanted, then that just increased the stimuli, right? You're like, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Like that made you want to do it even more. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's turn this back to uh, we, we took a little bit of a detour talking about that, but I appreciate you giving a you know practical application of changing mindsets. It's very very simple. Replace and have it include your body. So no matter what it is, if you have worrisome or negative thoughts about money, replace that thought or get out of your head through using something with your body. If if you have issues in your relationship or there's a there's a pattern that you notice that is destructive, replace it with something that includes movement in your body. I've seen a common theme here. Absolutely. <laughs> let's let's talk about your journey on the other side of this. So naturally to put out a book and to do what you're doing, you've had to become uh, good at marketing, good at messaging, branding. What would you say has been your biggest obstacle in the launch of your book and uh, getting it in front of readers? You know, if I had to, if I had to say, if I had to use the word obstacle, I would just say it's the simple noise of, of everything. You know, we live in a very noisy environment right now, and so, and by that I mean, you know, with like we go back to social media. You know, that's social media is kind of the driving platform for 
for reach, if you will, for exposure, for getting people to see your stuff and everything. But on the same token, it's probably the noisiest place as well. You know what I mean? Like sure, yeah. every everybody's a coach, everybody's a guru, everybody's an expert, everybody's this, everybody's that. And so I think you really have to, you know, you have to be congruent with your messages. And for me, you know, kind of flipping a, a taking a, a what, you know, you said the word obstacle, taking that and flipping it to a positive. For me, I just look at it like this, Bryce. I look at it as as long as I'm putting out content that is congruent with my message of helping people, of bringing people a resource that is going to give them tools that is going to allow them to be a better version of themselves. I try not to get caught up in the details of the conversion, if you will. So I really didn't have any expectations when I put this book out. I mean, obviously, I'm like, you know, gosh, I want this to be so successful, but not necessarily because I'm like, I'm looking for like some kind of spotlight or some kind of whatever. It's basically because if you'll see in the book, I have this, this crazy, you know, this, this obsessive, audacious goal of I, I, re- I want to help a million people become their best self. And I'm not crazy enough to think that I can do that on my own. Right. And so I think that as long as I'm putting out content that gets somebody else to get a concept that might allow them to then reteach that concept to somebody in their circle of success, I'm counting that as a win, man. I'm counting that as a win for me and as a win for this million people. Because I just think that that's all we have to focus on is if I keep my why and my why is to help people at the forefront of everything I do, then I don't get derailed in the details. I don't get muddied up. What a beautiful thought, man. I love that. Spinning your obstacle around to a success and then focusing on what the true success is, which is your goal of helping a million people become their best selves. Awesome, yeah. man. Thank you. It's a really noble cause. You know, we're, we're close to wrapping up here, so I wanted to just throw it out there. What's the best way for listeners of Rules of Success to become involved with you? Absolutely. If you're, you know, if you're interested in the overweight mind, you can just go to theoverweightmind.com. You can see all the books there. You can buy it from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, anywhere that anywhere that sells books, you can grab it off of that site. You can look at me up on thrivefitnessstudio.com, um, jnixon.com. Uh, my main website is actually going to be Nixon Elite. So N I X O N Elite E L I T E dot com. You can find all my stuff there. I'm on all the social platforms and, and everywhere, man. So each one of those links, you guys, I've said this before, if you're listening, touch the image on your phone. It'll flip over for the show notes and it'll have everything there so you can go and uh, pick up a copy of his book. Um, before we wrap up, I wanted to just ask you kind of as a, a, a parting thing, what's what's uh, you know the last part of your message here before we go that you'd like to share? You know, it's kind of how I started it, Bryce. Like I, I truly believe that we, as human beings, like we were designed to be great. I think we were designed to live like really fruitful and energetic and positive lives. And I just, I just, my goal and my wish is that everyone will just start to believe that they're capable of being and doing and having truly anything they set their mind to. And if we can somehow eliminate this limiting belief that we that a lot of people have i think there'll just be a giant shift in the way we act the way we talk the way we behave the way we treat each other and that's just my goal man is i want everybody to live at their highest vibration and just live at their best self i mean if if i can help one person do that like i consider that a win man so like you said earlier guys if you recognize you have a limiting belief isolate it and get out and move your body and replace it with something that's uh, more effective. Anyway, Jay, you've been a, uh, a gentleman and a scholar. I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, all the links to be able to uh, connect with Jay personally and through his platforms are in the show notes. Um, it's good stuff, man. Really appreciate you coming on it. Dude, I loved it, man. It was awesome. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Trent Outson, a.k.a. Six Sense. Thanks for tuning in to the Rules of Success podcast. Next week, join us again for another ride. In the meantime, make sure to reach out to us on social media. To tweet our host directly, try at I am Mr. Prescott, or check out our website at rulesofsuccess.us. Until next time, take it a day at a time.